Hello, good afternoon, good evening, good morning, and welcome. It's Nurse Richard the Wax Wizard. Thanks for joining me. Now, it's an interesting procedure today, and I think you're going to enjoy it. Um, from the title, I might have drawn a few of you in. Um, now, this was a young girl, and it was a, a very young girl. Um, I think, if I'm not mistaken, she might be about five, six years old, something like that. And I have seen her before. Um, I saw her when she was four, and it was just over um, a year later. I saw her again, and it's always difficult to diagnose uh, keratosis obturans, which is what I think this is. Um, it's difficult to diagnose it in smaller children, but a lot of the clues were there, to be honest. The fact that I'd already seen her once, and she had a really uh, thick, dense, impacted plug uh, that we managed to get out uh, the first time and then just over a year later the same thing happened again and that that immediately made me suspect well what's going on here now you can already tell can't you that there's a few kind of layers wrapped around this it becomes a bit more obvious uh, as the video progresses and a bit more obvious when you see the second ear as well and um, you can just see the flapper skin at the top there can't you um, now if anyone's not heard of uh, that condition before I'll try and briefly explain it. I'll not get too blind in you with the science involved in it, because I know a lot of you will already know it already, but for those of you who haven't heard about it, I'll briefly explain it. So, um, keratose obturans is a, is a condition whereby uh, the skin in the ear canal fails to shed, fails to shed sideways anyway. Um, because what happens normally in most ear canals is the ear canal sheds its skin. It's called epithelial migration and the skin sheds from in to out. So the ear is constantly uh, getting rid of this layers of dead skin because if the body didn't do that, then we'd all constantly have uh, a, a plug of dead skin in our ears. So the body's thought of a way around this and it's thought, well, let's move this skin out sideways and just fall out. Um, and in this particular condition, keratose obturans, that doesn't happen. Uh, so the skin kind of uh, the skin dies, it sheds, it falls off, but instead of moving sideways, it just stays where it is. And that's when you can get issues like this. I'm using the fine-in tube here. Are you wondering why? It was a small child, um, a small ear. Everything's in miniature when you're dealing with children. And so um, it, I did have to move to the bigger one uh, shortly to get the rest of this out because there just wasn't enough power, unfortunately, with the uh, smaller tube, which can happen. Um, but I try and always start with the smaller tube, with the fine end tube, which is absolutely minuscule if you're thinking, what's the proportions of this? It, we're talking millimetres here. This is absolutely tiny. Um, because uh, obviously, if, if you've seen any children, it can be uh, quite daunting, can be quite frightening for them. Um, but I'd seen this, this, this young girl before, so she, she was quite comfortable with me. Um, again, another clue here, if you just look to the top of it, you can see the, the freshly shed skin is a bit paler it's more white in appearance and that's again another clue to me that that's what's going on uh, in this condition so yeah it kind of just builds up layer by layer by layer um so you'll get it'll be often darker in the middle and paler around the outside where the the, the frosty shed skin is is around the outside and then the, the oldest dead skin that shed is more towards the uh, inside of this plug um I don't know if she experienced too much pain with this. It was certainly probably uncomfortable. Um, the bigger problem was probably a, a hearing loss to, to start with. Um, that's obviously what brought it to me. Um, and as you can see, I'm having a good old wrestle with this. It's kind of like um, when you're trying to remove something like this with a fine end tube, it's like uh, trying to chop down a tree with a toothpick. <laughs> I'd like to describe it as. Um, but it's, I always prefer to, to try doing it this way with, with the children anyway. Because like I said, it can be um, quite daunting and quite quite frightening for them. And again, you can just see these layers, can't you, around the outside. Um, it's, it's quite, it's more, even though the second ear isn't quite as blocked up, it's more obvious because you have a lot more of these uh, white layers of, of dead skin all around it. And here's where I'm just trying to pull it through, but it's, it's just getting trapped, it's kind of clinging on. And again, that's kind of what happens in this. I'm not sure if it was at this point where I decided 
I'm just going to need to send send the big guns in. <laughs> there it is. Here come the big guns, and it comes out without too much of an argument. Um, I do get a lot of children landing up on my door, and the reason is not a lot of people around here uh, see children. They're either not suitably qualified enough, not brave enough, <laughs> or daft enough, um, or or experienced enough. Um, now. There's, there's very little difference other than proportions, to be honest with you, uh, when it comes to dealing with children in their ears. Um, but I would say that the biggest skill that you've got to have is learning how to communicate with children. Um, you've got to know how to talk to them, how to put them at ease, how to make them relax, how to make them trust you. Um, you know, especially if someone's had a bad experience with it in the past. Thankfully, she'd been before. And she even remembered that last time she came, I gave her a chocolate bar. <laughs> I think it was a Freddo, <laughs> if memory serves me right. Um, I don't keep chocolate bars in the clinic. There it is, you can see it's nice and clear there. You can see the a few little bits here. We're absolutely not going to entertain those. She remembers getting a, a, a chocolate bar because every time I order suction tubes, the company who uh, deliver the suction tubes, they usually always throw a chocolate bar in there. Now, that usually ends up in my belly, but... <laughs> that day I must have forgotten <laughs> must have forgotten to have it and then she came in and said well do you know what I've got some it's not just stickers you can get today I've got a chocolate bar lying around you want that here you can see a little more obvious isn't it can you see the uh, the, the white layer of skin on there so yeah it's a little more it is it's not uncommon uh, for children to get keratosopterans it can happen and I believe it's more common in both ears uh, in children than it is in, in adults it's slightly more common in uh, females as well. I'm, I'm happy to stand corrected on that, but I'm sure I read somewhere that it's slightly more common in females. I don't, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> but uh, as as for the management of it, thankfully we've spotted this while she's relatively young, so hopefully it's not going to cause her too much problems in the future. You know, as long as we keep on top of it, keep removing it, then she's not likely to have any problems like um, remodeling of the ear or ear pain, going to come at regular intervals so we make sure it never gets to that stage because obviously that can happen. If this plug is ever expanding in the ear, it can cause extreme pain and it can also you know, start to widen uh, the ear canal. But uh, thankfully, mum and dad spot that there's a problem and uh, bring it to me. You can just see some thick layers of dead skin uh, coming out with this one as well. And you can see the eardrum there, happy with that. A little bit tidy up around the outside, not too concerned about any of it, but uh, a happy young lady and hello to you if you're watching. I know mum does follow the channel. Um, hope you enjoy this procedure <laughs> um, and I'll probably see you next year at some point. But anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. But for now, take care of yourself and I'll see you later. Ta-da.